Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So you've already probably seen the video on the Brother SX4000 Daisy Wheel Electronic Robo Clacker right here. I have written uh, one or two blog articles about it also. But this right here is the Smith Corona made in Singapore Sears branded SR1000 C series Daisy Wheel typewriter. The Brother is from 1997. This Smith Corona Sears is from 1992. I thought I would do a little review about the Sears Smith Corona. Stay tuned. While the Brother typewriter is more indicative of the kind of daisy wheel typewriter you can still buy today online, I think this Smith Corona made Sears is probably more like the older generation of typewriters from the late 80s, early 90s. It uses the H series ribbon and correction cartridges that the Smith Coronas use, which in that case reminds me of the old black or dark gray Smith Corona SE100 wedge shaped daisy wheel typewriter that I bought new in the early 1980s. So this typewriter though was not in as good of a shape as the brother when I acquired it. So I wanted to kind of talk to you about what I had to do to get it back in working order. You have probably remember me showing you how easily the power cord gets, gets wrapped and stowed in the Brother typewriter. You just wrap it up haphazard-like and stuff it in this little compartment here. It's very easy and convenient. On the other hand, the Smith Corona Sears has this rather interesting wrapping fixture around the back of the machine. And it's built so that you can't really easily wrap the cord when it's sitting on a table, you actually have, because of the gap down here is really narrow, you actually have to pull it off near the edge of the table so you can unwrap it. It's quite inconvenient. And you'll notice on the Brother machine, its compartment is much higher up off the table, so it's the table doesn't interfere with it. But on the Smith Corona, it's kind of fiddly. Uh, that's just one of the differences I do notice between the two machines here. So let's see if I can get it wrapped. And then you have to stick the little plug in, in something like that. Well, on this uh, Sears Smith Corona typewriter, when I first set it down on my workbench, I pulled off this top panel right here, and it actually unclips uh, from these two hinges right here, although the right hinge is actually busted. But when I did that, plugged it in, and went to test it, the only thing that would happen is the machine would try to reset itself, and then it would stop, and then the LED would flash. And it took me quite a while to figure out what was happening? Why was that happening? I thought it was a problem, you know, in the logic of the machine or maybe a stepper motor or home sensor or whatever. Well, as it turns out, there's a little rectangular opening here. There is a little black, like a spring-loaded lever that pushes down, and that's pushed by this little protrusion on the cover. And what this switch does is when it's in the up position like it is now, it causes this home sensor switch for the carrier to be closed. What it does normally is the ribbon carrier will move back until it pushes the home switch and closes the switch and that tells it it's at the physical hardware limit. And then it backs off so many stepper motor counts to the current left margin position, the default left margin position. But with this cover off and this little plastic thing in the up position, it causes the limit switch to always be closed so it can't do the reset properly. All of that to say that you have to have this cover in place, at least this little thing pushing down in that little hole in order for it to properly work. Well, I did that, finally, I figured it out, but also I noticed even after getting the machine working, the ribbon wasn't moving, it wasn't advancing, and it turned out to be that this existing ribbon cartridge was not turning. Uh, it just, there's a drive spindle right here, and there is a little plastic drive shaft right here. Anyway, it wasn't turning it, and so I ended up having to take the cartridge apart because I didn't have a spare one, and I was able to free up the cartridge enough so it started working. However, the machine doesn't really give a good imprint, at least I think it's the cartridge, and so I ordered a new cartridge, which we'll have to put in, and also the correction cartridge 
The H series correction cartridge is not sticky at all. It wasn't doing the lift off correction. So I've ordered a new one of these as well. And we're gonna put those in and try it out. Uh, the caveat I should explain here is that on the Brother machine, I replaced the correction tape just this morning with one that I ordered, and it still doesn't do any liftoff correction, and the, the new tape that I bought is not sticky at all. So probably out there, people are selling new old stock correction liftoff ribbons, and they're, they've lost all their stickiness just due to age. I should also mention that another problem I had with this machine was the backspace key would not respond. I had to take apart the keyboard and clean off the little conductive pads on the rubber membrane. And also, the red shift lock light was intermittent, and it was the same problem. The legs of the LED make contact with a, a conductive pad on the ribbon cable, and it just wasn't making good contact. So I had to take it apart a second time, clean off those contacts. So. The last time I tested this, uh, what, four days ago, it was working fine. But what I want to do right now is just install new correction and printing ribbons. Well, so I ordered on Amazon these ribbons, a two-pack of printing ribbons and a correction tape. And just from looking at the way the cardboard package is kind of dog-eared, these might be new old stock. So it's questionable as to whether the liftoff ribbon is actually functional or not, but we're gonna try it anyways and see what happens. And you'll probably notice that these are actually Smith Corona branded, which is probably the only thing Smith Corona makes, whatever is left of the company after the name has been sold to whoever, who knows what the story is there, but this is probably what they have left, is just the cartridges. Something like that, okay. Okay, so testing out this Smith Corona Sears. Ah, let's erase that letter. Ah, oops, no. So this is what happens uh, when I try doing a word erase. Somehow the correction ribbon gets slack and it pops up and then it interrupts and interferes with the main printing ribbon. Okay, as I started to test type on this machine initially, I started testing out the correction feature and immediately I ended up with problems. The correction tape started getting snarled, it wasn't correcting, and it was actually wrinkling the ribbon cassette tape also. So, after a series of trials and errors, I found out what happened. Okay, the supply side reel for the correction tape is on the right and the take-up side is on the left. And the problem was the supply side needs to have this kind of back tension. You can hear it. And that back tension comes from this spring that runs along the rim of this sprocket behind this flange. Well, the spring had popped down behind it so that it wasn't providing any back tension and so this supply reel was loose and it was causing the correction tape to get loose in here which caused it when it lifted up to correct it would get snagged on the uh, paper guide and just mangle it and then it would also mangle the uh, actual ribbon itself so I think I got it fixed here Okay, here is a test sentence, and it looks like our erasing is working, and after the erasing, it continues to print fine. So right now we have a working print cartridge and a working erasing tape cartridge, and that is a good thing. Yay! So the insides of this machine were very dirty, and I had to do a lot of cleaning and degreasing. The guide rods that the print carrier ride on were super de dirty and with old grease. I had to clean them off with alcohol. And also the um, serial number tag and this little warning tag had just come off because the glue was so old, and I went ahead and just taped them back with some packing tape just to put them back in place, but it was super dirty inside, and the outside of the typewriter looked like it was covered in splatters of mud and paint, by the way, so it's a lot cleaner than it was before. Well, the right-hand hinge for this cover that has to stay down in order for it to work properly, the right-hand hinge, part of the plastic parts are broken off, and I fashioned a piece from acrylic plastic and super glued it in there at least just to hold it in place hopefully so it's a little bit less floppy we'll see how it works Actually, I have to do 
this goes here like that. Okay, the print wheel. On the Smith Coronas, the print wheels are not protected by a plastic case like they are on the Brothers, so you have to be much more careful with them when you're removing and installing them because these little plastic pedals can break off. Got to be careful with it. And putting it back on, kind of put it on the shaft, and then you have to reseat it like that. And then the tricky part, making sure that correction tape is fully seated on both spindles. Okay. Well, you're probably interested to know how this typewriter works. And actually, it works rather fine. It's actually a little bit quieter than the newer Brother machine. And the carriage return is a little quieter as well, or carrier return. And, of course, the correction tape system, the lift-off correction, now works properly, but unfortunately with the Brother, I still don't have a functional correction tape either. So, anyway, this Smith Corona is working. And it has a softer touch slightly, and less noise. Well, I think it's about time we look over some of the basic features of it. Well, using the special features on the keyboard with this Smith Corona is a little bit easier than on the Brother, actually. So you have this yellow code key, and basically anything in yellow, that's what it's going to access. So if you start up here on the top row above the number keys, you'll see all these features. These are all accessed with the yellow code key, including your pitch setting, which is either 10 or 12. So it doesn't have 15 pitch like the Brother. Line spacing is 1, 1 and a half, or 2 like the Brother. You have power feeding this paper up and down arrow and this is the actual direction of the paper not the printing position so it's kind of counterintuitive and it is in whole line increments the brother did half line increments on the paper feed this is whole line increments which is a little easier to think about there's subscript and superscript so it basically moves the print position a half line up or down for sub and superscript and then there's an auto printing feature the center is for center or printing like a title or whatever and then this activates the auto carriage return so when you're in the hot zone it'll automatically return for you what this machine lacks however is an LCD screen so you don't really know what mode you're in like in terms of return mode or whatever you don't really know that because it doesn't tell you there's no information screen um, let's look at some of the other features however so you have any of these yellow symbols you can access with a code key like the section symbol, paragraph symbol, some international symbols, brackets, uh, yeah, more international symbols, the caret, etc. There is a tab, tab set, and the tab clearing is done with the tab set also. I think it's the C the is the clear margin left and right so your left margin is with this key the right margin you hold the code down and get the yellow uh, r for right margin set there is a half space setting so you can erase a word and insert a missing letter using the half space feature and then you have correct which will correct the last letter typed and erase a word will erase the last word typed and it does not have a dictionary to irritate you with like the brother does. Now another feature it has with the correction is that if you have already gone off of the current line and you want to go back and erase a character, you can use the paper up down keys with the code key to move the line, the printing line, back to where that error was and then use the backspace or the space bar to position the print carrier to where your error is and then you hold down the code key and the correction and then you retype the character and it will 
will erase it and then you type the correct character in its place. There is another feature for the half space key and that is if you have an extra letter in a word that is improperly typed, you erase the whole word and then you can use the half space key to put an extra half a space between the previous and the next word and retype that in this case a three-letter word instead of a four-letter word and that'll help fill up the extra spaces in there and make it look better in terms of typography. So another feature that's in the manual but not actually on the keyboard is impression control. If you hold the code key down and hit H M or L, it'll be high, medium, or low impressions. It basically controls the force of the print hammer striking the print wheel. And so I've sort of just marked little marks on those three keys with pencil, just to remind myself that that's high, medium, and low print force. Another feature that I like with this Smith Corona better than the brother is when you do shift lock, you can clear shift lock either by hitting the shift lock key again or with either shift key. So that's actually kind of nice. With the brother, you have to hit only the shift key to clear the shift lock. Hitting the shift lock again won't clear it, but I really like the way this is implemented. It's much more logical. Well, as far as keyboard layout is concerned, I really like this keyboard layout better than the brother because the return key is not quite so obnoxiously big. And when I go to hit the shift, the shift key is wide and horizontal shaped and I can just move my pinky over here and anywhere along here I can hit as my shift. With the brother keyboard the return key was more L shaped and its bottom part of the L protruded down to where this would have been on the shift key and it has a much smaller sh shift key on the right side. So better keyboard I don't hit the return key by mistake as often as I do with the brother machine. That being said, however, uh, the correct and word erase keys are pretty darn close to the period. And this is one thing that I think I'm going to be having problems with is touch typing. I go to hit the period and I over hit it just a wee bit and I end up hitting the word erase instead. So you got to be careful. Well, this plastic frame here with the line numbers for 10 and 12 characters per inch, this is actually the paper bale that they call it spring-loaded, you can raise it up and then it'll drop back down, and the paper goes behind it. The numbers are not entirely close to the paper because you can see the thickness of this plastic bar. There's a little bit of parallax error, but it's not as bad as on the Brother Machine because the Brother Machine, the paper scale is on the clear cover, which is much further out from the paper, and there's even more parallax error in terms of, am I right at 30 or am I at 31? Depends on whether you hold your head left or right of it. So it's not too bad. Uh, one thing that's kind of counterintuitive when you first look at this machine though, is you have the slot back here. Let's see if I can show this to you. The slot in the rear is where you feed the paper into. The middle slot is where the paper needs to come out of. And the front here is just your view of the typing line and the ribbons and stuff. But it's kind of counterintuitive when you first start threading paper in here for the first time. You might think that the paper should come in front of the paper scale in this front slot. No, it shouldn't. It needs to go out the middle slot here. Well, I got these two Daisy Wheel typewriters, the Smith Corona Made Sears and the Brother, in the same hall as a result of people giving away typewriters at the Type Inn recently in Albuquerque here. And uh, so I'm kind of comparing both of these together, uh, one to the other, because they are both very similar. They're both made in the 1990s, uh, and uh, they came into my collection together. But I'm going to do a more formal comparison in a future video, and also I'll be comparing them too with the even older and even larger Nakajima-made Olympia Report electronic daisy wheel typewriter. Suffice to say that both of these typewriters are kind of nice. I like the keyboard feel and a little bit quieter operation of the Smith Corona, which kind of surprises me actually because some of the Smith Coronas are really loud clackers and don't really have great feel. This one 
I think it's a little better than some of the others I've tried. And it does m remind me more of my SE100 that I had way back in the early 1980s. That being said, this is more indicative, as I said earlier, of an older type of uh, Days of Wheel typewriter. The Brother typewriter you saw earlier in the other video is much more like the kind you can still get today. So if you can put up with, if you can tolerate plastic bodied typewriters with their little plastic squeaks, putting up with the fact that they might be slightly loud to operate because of the clacking of the print solenoid, but the other side of the coin is they put out really pristine quality print provided, a big caveat here, both your correction tape and your printing cartridge are installed properly and in good shape. So as to the question of which one of these two typewriters will I be using, well I've been using the Brother typewriter for almost the last entire week. I got it six days ago. But now I have this Smith Corona Sears and I'm going to be spending more time with it as well to see if I get along with it. And I'll be certain to share my results with you guys. This is all about the quest for more creative tools to enable us to creatively write. I'm really interested in this last generation of typewriters, the electronic daisy wheel typewriters, because this is all we have left for new typewriters to buy. I'm in the quest to see how does it work? Can I actually get on with it? Can I really be creative with it? And I need to try out more than just one model in order to answer that question for myself and for you guys also. But in the meantime, I wish you a good day. Stay creative. Bye-bye for now.